I don't know how. They're flying where they shouldn't be able to fly. These were the words whispered by Major Hans Joachim Marseille in his diary after an aerial combat over the English Channel in September 1940. What he didn't know was that he was witnessing a silent revolution that would completely redefine aerial warfare. For months, Luftwaffe pilots observed with growing perplexity something that challenged everything they knew about high-altitude combat. British Spitfires seemed to operate effortlessly at altitudes where their own Messerschmitt BF-109s began to falter. The acrid smell of rarefied oxygen burned the nostrils of German pilots at 8,000 meters, while their vision blurred and their reflexes diminished. But up there, even higher, British fighters danced through the skies as if they were flying at sea level. What the Germans initially failed to realize was that they were facing not only skilled pilots, but also a revolutionary oxygen system technology that would give the British a devastating tactical advantage. This late discovery would cost the Luftwaffe hundreds of aircraft and forever change the nature of aerial combat in World War II. The Battle of Britain had begun with the Luftwaffe confident in its numerical superiority and the experience gained in previous campaigns. German pilots, veterans of Poland, France and Norway, believed they knew all the limitations of aerial combat. Hauptmann Werner Mölders, one of the Luftwaffe's most respected aces, reported in his memoirs the growing frustration. Our 109s were superior in speed and armament, but something was wrong. The Spitfires attacked us from impossible altitudes. The Luftwaffe's standard protocol established that effective combats rarely occurred above 7,000 meters, where the lack of pressurized oxygen began to severely affect pilot performance. The German oxygen systems of the time were rudimentary, simple masks connected to oxygen cylinders that provided a constant but inefficient flow. From 6,000 meters, German pilots already felt the first symptoms of hypoxia. Decreased visual acuity, slower reaction times, and, crucially, reduced ability to make quick tactical decisions. It was an accepted limitation incorporated into their combat doctrines. But the British were silently rewriting these rules. What the Luftwaffe didn't know was that the Royal Air Force had developed, in absolute secrecy, the most advanced oxygen system in the world at the time. While the Germans used constant flow systems that wasted precious oxygen, the Spitfires were equipped with the revolutionary economizer system, an automatic regulator that provided oxygen on demand based on altitude and the pilot's breathing. Lieutenant Colonel Frank Whittle, chief engineer of the project, had calculated that this system allowed effective operations up to 12,000 meters, an altitude where German pilots could barely maintain consciousness. The contrast was brutal. While a BF-109 pilot at 8,000 meters struggled with blurred vision and dulled reflexes, a Spitfire pilot at the same altitude maintained 95% of their operational capacity. The British masks were ergonomically superior, with perfect sealing and integrated microphones that allowed clear communication even at extreme altitude. Even more impressive was the integrated heating system. German pilots faced temperatures of 40 degrees south at altitude, with inadequate heating systems that frequently failed, while British pilots remained warm and alert. This technological advantage turned each high-altitude combat into an unequal battle, where the Germans fought not only against the enemy, but also against the limitations of their own equipment. The first German combat reports revealed a growing confusion that bordered on despair. Oberleutnant Gustav Rödel wrote in September 1940, It's impossible. They attack us from 9,000 meters like hawks executing maneuvers that our pilots cannot perform at that altitude. The Luftwaffe commanders initially attributed these observations to British propaganda or the exaggeration of pilots under stress. But the numbers didn't lie. German losses in high-altitude combats were 300% higher than losses at low altitude. General Adolf Galland, commander of the Luftwaffe fighters, ordered detailed investigations. The German technical reports of the time, discovered after the war, reveal a systematic but fundamentally flawed analysis. German engineers concluded that the Spitfires had superior engines or secret aerodynamic modifications. They never suspected that the advantage lay in the life support system. Captured German pilots reported terrifying experiences. We saw the Spitfires above us, but when we tried to climb to intercept them, our vision darkened and we lost coordination. It was like fighting ghosts. The psychological impact was devastating. Experienced pilots began to avoid high-altitude combats, severely limiting the Luftwaffe's tactical effectiveness. The discovery of the truth came dramatically and late. In March 1941, a Spitfire Mk-5, 
was forced to land in occupied territory in France after combat damage. Pilot officer James McLean was captured, but his aircraft remained relatively intact. When German technicians examined the cockpit, they found something that left them stunned, an oxygen system of complexity and sophistication that surpassed anything they had seen. The German technical report, classified as Geheim, Ultra Secret, described in minute detail each component. The British system uses an automatic pressure regulator that adjusts the oxygen flow based on barometric altitude. The efficiency is approximately 400% superior to our current systems. Major Hans Ulrich Rudel, present during the inspection, reported, We finally understand why we were losing so many high-altitude combats. We weren't just fighting pilots, we were fighting a technology that was completely unknown to us. The revelation was a shock that reverberated throughout the Luftwaffe hierarchy. Hermann Göring, upon receiving the report, is said to have shouted, Why didn't anyone tell us they had this? How many pilots have we lost due to our ignorance? Germany's desperate attempt to develop equivalent systems revealed the extent of its technological disadvantage. The accelerated development program, initiated in April 1941, faced insurmountable obstacles. The shortage of strategic materials, especially synthetic rubber for seals and special alloys for pressure regulators, severely limited progress. The German prototypes tested at altitude consistently failed. Leaks, valve freezing, and imprecise regulation made the systems not only ineffective but dangerous. Meanwhile, the British continued refining their technology. In 1942, they introduced liquid oxygen systems that allowed even greater flight autonomy at extreme altitude. The contrast was stark. German pilots were still struggling with equipment that limited them to 7,000 effective meters, while the Spitfires routinely operated at 11,000 meters. The combat statistics reflected this disparity. Between 1941 and 1943, 68% of German losses in interception combats occurred at altitudes above 8,000 meters. Oberst Johannes Steinhoff, veteran fighter pilot, summarized the situation. We discovered too late that we weren't losing due to lack of courage or skill, but due to a fundamental technological deficiency that our enemies exploited masterfully. The legacy of this late discovery extended far beyond the Battle of Britain, permanently redefining modern aerial warfare. The advantage of the British oxygen systems directly contributed to the Luftwaffe's failure to establish air superiority over England, altering the course of the war. After 1943, all the world's air forces prioritized the development of advanced life support systems, recognizing that cockpit technology was as crucial as engine power or armament. The lesson was brutal and clear. In modern warfare, technological superiority in seemingly secondary systems can determine the outcome of entire campaigns. The German pilots who survived the war carried with them a bitter irony. They had been defeated not only by the skill of their adversaries, but by their own ignorance of the enemy's capabilities. As General Adolf Galland observed in his post-war memoirs, we learned that in modern aerial warfare, knowing the enemy means knowing not only their tactics and armaments, but every system that keeps their pilots alive and effective in combat. Our failure to recognize the importance of oxygen systems cost us not only aircraft, but the very war in the skies of Europe.